Hello everybody, Happy New Year 2023 and welcome back to the Capella podcast. This week we have Carly Vincent on and Carly is here to tell us about her passion for empowering nursing moms in the workplace. She is the founder of the Traveling Milk Truck. She came up with a lot of new company policies and with a lot of strategies on how to manage breastfeeding, going back to work, being a new mother, etc., etc. So I'm super excited for that one. And let's hear from Carly. Well, hi, Carly. I'm so glad to have you on today. Um, how are you doing? Great. And thanks for having me on your podcast today. I, I love being guests on podcasts, but also generally speaking, talking about motherhood, because I think it is so valuable and important. And the more that moms talk about it, I feel like the more comfortable we get in the experience holistically of motherhood. So thank you. Sure, definitely. And also, if we can add something to that is the fact that it's not talked about enough, I think, and all the challenges aren't talked about enough. So I'm super happy you're here today and we can contribute to uh, making it a more discussed topic. Um, so first, I'd love to ask you to introduce yourself, um, tell us what you're up to, what you're doing, uh, with especially with the traveling milk truck and your book and everything that's going on. Um, love to, you know, know more about you. Yeah, well, thank you. So just, you know, a little bit about myself. I um, was a new mom traveling for work, um, learning how to breastfeed and pump on the go, and really trying to navigate that space with very little to no support. And I realized after some of my coworkers came to me that there was an absolute need for a resource and support for other moms uh, to navigate the um, the career, having a career and having children and, and traveling, um, because it's a uh, much needed support in, um, just, um, all around the United States. And I think internationally as well. So I started my book, um, which honestly was a blog and then, um, it turned into resources for my employer. And then, um, eventually, it has become the traveling milk truck, which um, my book hasn't been published yet, but it's in the final stages. And I'm excited to share that with other moms and parents who need that extra bit of support, knowing that they're on the right journey for themselves. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, that is very exciting. Um, could you Tell us maybe a little bit more about what we can expect from the book. Is it inter interviews, what you learned by, you know, through talking to so many people uh, over the years, or is it like practical advice? Uh, what can we expect? It's, it's honestly a little bit of both. Um, I think the traveling milk truck had initially started with um, pointers for mom to, to navigate. How do you manage your schedules and what do you pack in your go bag? And, How do you have those hard conversations at work? But then it slowly transformed into just more than not only navigating um, those difficult spaces and conversations, but I've had the opportunity to interview some leading experts in the industry, including um, Mamava, Milk Stork, um, those from Moms Rising. The other piece of the book that has transformed is being able to open up that conversation with employers to update policies within the workforce because moms going back, they really need a lot of support. So how do you navigate that? So it's a little bit of a policy conversation, a little bit of a feeling supported in the workforce when you go back. And then the other piece, most definitely, um, you know, talking to other moms. I have lots of interviews from other moms, how they handled traveling and what they um, did to uh, help minimize the the stress of everything because it's a lot when you're pumping and traveling or pumping and working it's it's a lot for one mom to handle i mm -hmm. at one point estimated that i had pumped um nearly 
two to 3,000 hours within a year, which mm-hmm. in and of itself is another job. So yeah. how, do you, how do you do both with, with um, feeling supported in that space? Mm-hmm. I'm very interested in the kind of policies aspect that you mentioned. And, um, and so could you maybe talk to me about how these conversations with employers usually go and how, you know, every woman can kind of improve the conversations with their employers, um, um, you know, when they're, when they want to go back to work, when they well and want to feel more supported, um, you know, how do you go about having these conversations and what are the best kind of, you know, policies that you can put in place as an employer, even as well, to support breastfeeding moms or moms returning to work? Yeah, I think uh, for employers listening in, potentially, um, general awareness and education and having that conversation with a mom, because honestly, breastfeeding, while it feels like a long time, or or, um, breastfeeding or pumping, It feels Mm -hmm. like a long time to a mom because that's a lot of time and energy and commitment, but um, it's honestly a very short period in a woman's life. Mm -hmm. But when there is that support and advocacy in place um, and care for, for new moms or parents transitioning back into the workforce after having a baby, then they're more studies all show they're more likely to stay. Um, Mm -hmm. And and as a happy employer, they feel more supported. Um, There's less of a turnover rate for Mm -hmm. for, uh, you as an employer. But if the time and energy is spent um, on education for employees, there's more advocacy uh, around the the workforce. Now, if you are a um, mom, what the conversations that I've had with moms who have stepped up, Mm -hmm. um, there's a difference between having a baby for the first time and not, and really not knowing how to navigate conversations going back into the workforce, because there's a little bit of a fear aspect Mm -hmm. I've found for moms not knowing how to broach conversations. But if you come up with an action plan Um, Mm -hmm. before you talk to your manager or your employer, um, come more, more uh, like a conversation rather than asking for demands or come, come to them with the question of support rather than, um, than, um, trying to put a policy in place that may or may not, um, uh, come through just, an open conversation goes a lot further than I think um, not knowing how to yeah. uh, manage those difficult conversations. Yes. No, that makes a lot of sense, creating a plan beforehand and then kind of showing that plan to the employer. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and so, you know, on maybe if we want to dig deeper into like what these items could be on the plan, like what have you seen people do throughout like your career inter- interviewing other women or your own experience what are like these concrete steps that you could put into your plan saying i need this from you i need that from you um you know do you have any examples of things that we can put into these plans i think most definitely the biggest need moms um and lactating people need is a safe space to pump mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be fancy um, you obviously sanitary, not in a bathroom, um, in, uh, just a place where they're not going to get walked in on a place where there is a plug for electrical needs, um, is one of the biggest, um, areas of that, um, that pumping people's need support. Like, honestly, yeah. that, that is first and foremost showing and that you are supporting new parents. Mm-hmm. The second piece I would say is that that um, moms don't really know what pieces of equipment that can benefit them, you know, and mm-hmm. I, I certainly didn't when I was traveling. I was like, how do I r- pump in the car or how do I navigate traveling um, 13 hours and making sure that I'm I'm taking enough breaks to pump when 
doors don't lock in airports and how how do you um, put your pump together and find that plug to make to make the pumping work mm -hmm. um, and then um, just helping employers get help moms essentially get the right equipment that they need so mm -hmm. if they are traveling for instance mm -hmm. um, milk stork is a really great example of of a tool or a resource that mm -hmm. can help moms not have to stash milk for months and months and months beforehand. They literally just need to pump when they're there and send that fresh milk back home to um, their families. So it's really supporting moms by having or lactating people by having a safe space and giving them the right tools and the right knowledge also to know like what to use and how to use it and um, what, what, what they need. And on that kind of topic, uh, another big pain point that I see or big issue that I see when I talk to new parents and expecting parents and is um, the fact that it's really hard and difficult to get trustworthy and reliable information about basically everything. Um, but in this, in that case about, you know, um, lactation and breastfeeding and all of that like what what are the best resources to learn from uh could we kind of you know cite a few resources uh and a few places on the internet that are really good places or a few brands I mean you already mentioned milk stork but um what's the best way for a new mom that wants to go back to work to basically get all the good information that she needs um Because I know that it's sometimes really hard to know what to trust and what to expect. Oh, and, ab absolutely. Um, absolutely. I think um, first and foremost, doing your research is so valuable and important because mm -hmm. there's a lot of misinformation in our world today. And um, that is important to note, uh, generally speaking. The second thing I would, I would recommend is because um, time for moms and uh, to heal after childbirth and then going right back in that's around the time that your hormones are starting to regulate you're just overwhelmed there's a separation um, you're experiencing your baby is really just figuring out how to breastfeed by the time you're you're going going mm -hmm. back to work including yourself I re I remember the that um, my daughter had um, what's called nipple confusion. And so she, all she wanted for a while was a bottle. And then she, uh, the um, I sought out a lactation consultant mm -hmm. who did wonders for my, my breastfeeding journey. I also kept in contact with her pediatrician. I was always trying to find resources for myself um, mm -hmm. uh, because as a new mom, it's okay not to know everything. Like you are in a learning space. Um, you are learning this new journey for yourself along with your little human that is is experiencing that journey with, with you. So I think first and foremost, most get that foundation uh, before you go back to the workforce where you're thrown into a new environment without, um, without the normal resources you might have at home. I know that there are lactation support groups that you mm -hmm. can you can find um, that did wonders for for my breastfeeding and pumping journey. And then um, when you get back into the office, um, find an ally that can help support you and be be your voice when you're in the pumping room or on the go. Um, uh, that you can have that support system around you when when you're um, so that way you don't feel so alone in that mm -hmm. space. Yeah, that definitely makes a lot of sense. And I think like sticking together is also very valuable. And when I interview parents, I always hear that their most trusted source of advice is other moms or other parents over whatever is written on the internet or books or anything else. So it's very valuable. Uh, you mentioned before that you had counted that you had breast that you had pumped, sorry, for like two to three thousand hours in a year at one point. So do you have any advice on, uh, you know, if you're working at the same time as you're doing this, how do you save time while you're pumping and when are maybe the best times, you know, to do it or how, how should you organize your day around it to make it as efficient as possible, I guess? Um, do you have any recommendations around that? Yes, absolutely. I think planning ahead is one of the biggest 
assets for yourself that that um, you can do. Check out your schedule in advance. I know that I was so sensitive. I I in a matter of months got mastitis not once but twice. Um, it's, it's ten out of ten not recommended <laughs> for for any mom. Um, breastfeeding it and pumping is a medical need. So make the time to do it, to keep your body healthy, um, to help regulate yourself. Um, so that way your milk supply doesn't go down. The important thing for me was that I would prep all of my, my pumping equipment the night before. Um, so that way I spent less time cleaning my pumping equipment because Santa, um, uh, sanitizing those items was at the top of my list. Um, the pumping equipment for moms has changed quite a bit. Um, so there are, um, pumps called the free me and the, the will willow that you can just put in your, um, clothes. And then if I was, uh, at, um, if I was traveling or if I was, um, uh, having a busy day in between meetings and having to pump, I would sometimes create a hands-free situation for myself. So that way I could bring my computer with me. I wouldn't recommend that, um, generally speaking, but if I needed to do that, I was, I was pumping in, um, in a pinch, you know, with, with my resources I needed around me. Okay. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, yeah, I think that's very, very interesting to talk about breastfeeding and work. And now if you want to take a more general approach and talk about just people going back to work after becoming parents, um, you know, especially with, you now we're kind of maybe a bit out of it, but the COVID-19 pandemic changed a lot of things. So since people are still working from home a lot. And I, I've seen you, your daughters just like walk in <laughs> as well. So it's just a whole thing of like managing how to be a parent and how to work and how to handle all the things uh, we're, we're trying to handle at the same time. So do you have any advice on how to go back to work um, in these times where the woman's doing most of the child care still? And especially in the pandemic, it's even worse because or even after the pandemic, when people have to work from home more, the mom maybe takes care of the children or the baby more than the other parents. So do you have any advice on how to manage all of this going back to work and having to take care of your family? And um... oh, absolutely. So I think it it's interesting now making my transition into motherhood and um, experiencing motherhood through the pandemic and working from home myself now. Um, and one of the biggest supports that employers can, um, provide to families is helping navigate the child care system, because as we've seen, that system is, has been quite broken for a very long time mm -hmm. and, um, the support systems and the policies are not in place to, um, make sure moms and families are feeling supported in that time. Um, with that being said, I think one of the biggest things that you can do is create a list uh, of resources for yourself. From a child care perspective, I recall even before the pandemic having one heck of a time getting on lists. And I used to look at um, parents that would get on child care lists six months before they had their baby. And I'm like, wow, that's how how privileged are you to be able to put your name down on the list and you know get a spot right away well the truth is is that they knew the secret that if you weren't on the list you probably weren't going to get in mm -hmm. we ended up for my first daughter not getting care for her until she was 8 months old mm -hmm. and this was even before the pandemic now um when everything shut down, not only did it demonstrate how fractured the childcare system was, but just when everything started opening back up, how um, broken everything still remained. So mm -hmm. getting childcare again and making sure um, uh, you had all of those resources in place is so incredibly difficult. And I, I know from my experience alone that moms are tired. They yeah. are exhausted. 
they are not feeling supported in the way that they should. Mm -hmm. And so if you have the ability to help support working moms, I do it. I think it's just one of those uh, valuable um, resources to provide for them, essentially, Um, whether or not that be policy or helping with childcare expense or being an employer that provides child care um, for for their employees, I think can go a long way for um, helping with mental health and the journey of motherhood. Mm-hmm. And this is maybe a more kind of open-ended question, but we've talked a lot about um, moms and, you know, because of course, breastfeeding is mostly, you know, moms, et cetera. But what about the, the other parents, um, uh, that's not maybe the parent that gave birth. And, uh, we haven't really talked about, about that other parent and what their role can be. Of course, there's no like parental leave in the U S anyway. So <laughs> it's, it's, been, it's oh, even like, we're not going to even start talking <laughs> about paternity leave, but how do you manage this time kind of as a couple when there's two individuals and how can they best support each other? Uh, Do you have any tips on that and any ideas on how we could improve and how we could have a society where both parents are as involved uh, as the other one? And um, yeah, do you have any ideas on that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think generally speaking, when both parental units are involved, um, the well-being of of, uh, the mom gets better, the 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 dad or the partner is more involved from the get-go. Um, the mm-hmm. the child's well-being is better holistically. Everything would be better with both parents having that opportunity for equal involvement. My my advice would be that if you were in a um, I know it, I would love to see the day come and pass where um, parental leave was gif- given in the United States, first and foremost, because it's so needed and would make um, such a huge difference, I think, um, holistically in America alone. I think we could talk indefinitely about that. But what I was going to say is that from a policy standpoint, If you have an employer, check out with your HR department, um, check with your employer, check with your benefits that you have to see if they are providing any leave. Because depending on where you are, you may Mm -hmm. be able to break your leave up into specific chunks, like two week time periods throughout the year. Um, And Mm -hmm. so you could take a staggering leave with your partner. You could... um, um, break it up into chunks so that way uh, you have more consistent care with your little one um, through for a longer period of time before you are relying on child care as the only resource or care for your little one while both of your partners go back to work. Yeah. My, hus- my husband is a firefighter, um, paramedic, and when we had our second he didn't even call to try and figure out the the leave for himself because um, uh, it was too difficult to navigate navigate the state leave policy um, uh, for him to even take the time off. So he just took all of his PTO instead. Mm-hmm. Which, if that doesn't go to show you how how much of a need for more support around leave is, uh, you know, I don't know what is. Yeah, no, definitely. And I actually love this idea of doing like two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, one parent, two weeks, the other parent. Well, one kind of last question that I like to ask um, everyone that comes on the podcast is, uh, you know, if you were faced right now with a brand new uh, parent or a brand new mom that just gave birth, what are your two to three, you know, most important kind of tips or pieces of advice that you would give uh, this new parent that's just become a perm for the first time? That's a really great question. Um, I think for new parents, um, the sleepless nights get better (laughs) a little bit by little bit. Um, it takes, it takes a while and it all depends on, you know, your kid's personality for a lot of, a lot of it, um, and seeing their personalities blossom and, and change. 
I think the other piece, if you are a mom and you're seeing all of these, if you're a new mom and you've just, um, are you're witnessing all of these changes in your body, if something doesn't feel right, call your doctor, uh, mm -hmm. you know, talk to them. Um, I, there were a number of times where I was told to wait and, you know, I ended up going to a therapist to, to try and get my body to realign after childbirth. Um, there's a lot, um, that women's bodies go through, uh, after having a baby. So, uh, get those resources you, you need, ask the, those questions. It's okay not to know. And then my last piece of advice is get the resource for a lactation support group or a mom group in place because, um, uh, it will go a long way for for yourself where villages are sorely lacking in today's um today's landscape for for new parents yeah no definitely that's such good advice um well thank you so so much for being on the podcast today yes, uh, it was great you. talking to you and um yeah thank you for your insights yes thank thanks again for having me on take sure. care